expect tremendous volatility and chaos, perhaps. Right? So this, this huge uh, changes that we're seeing in the financial markets and the stock exchanges is symptomatic of the over leverage of that whole sector. And so as that leverage is withdrawn, as people re recalibrate their risk or reprice their risk, then that'll be sort of a very difficult time, uh, I think, for a lot of the companies raising funds who are trying to innovate in this space. But the good news is that that will be a selection process for the strongest tech companies who have the strongest stories to win. The interesting thing for Asia is that we have 23 different jurisdictions, which were previously was a bug. Uh, that may be actually a feature now, given that, again, it can have the holy trinity of these technologies, the web payments technology, the blockchain technologies such as Bitcoin and smart contracts can enable you to build systems which interoperate above individual jurisdictions. So you, in the 23 different jurisdictions that we have in Asia, you can imagine us using these technologies, these internet-based technologies, to um, build interoperable systems. That's a very different way of facilitating trade than what the Europeans did, for example, with a single currency. And so how Asia uses these technical developments will be very interesting to see whether or not that sort of bears fruit in 2016. Well, the, the role of technology is to solve problems, right? And so when you have a system which is too big to fail, you have the wrong architecture. That seems quite clear. And so most of these centralized systems will be decentralized. In fact, that's one of the larger trends is moving from centralized to decentralized. That change itself could be chaotic. So whether or not the, not the instability, but the volatility in existing markets provides space for innovators to seize uh, remains to be seen. So for example, let me take Bitcoin for example. There's been reports uh, earlier this week that Bitcoin is the best performing, um, was the best performing currency in 2015. Right? Who could have known? Right? But this year in 2016 we have a halving, right? which is the uh, number of Bitcoins uh, when, when you mine is going to be reduced from to 12 and a half Bitcoin per, per block. Does that mean the price will double? I don't know. But the, the pace of, of investment in in this whole innovation space, which was a billion dollars, US dollars last year. Those companies are still, they're fully funded now. And so those companies will be going ahead and how they will make use of shortcomings of the existing system to play a larger role will be, will be interesting to see. Well, let me just say off the bat that regulation, and one, one of the most regulated areas outside of telecoms is finance. But regulation didn't stop Bernie Madoff. Regulation didn't stop the global financial crisis. So we have a crisis in regulation, which is what's the point? So the point of regulation, my belief is, is in many ways market stability and to ensure ecosystem stability so that the end consumer doesn't get hurt. So if on the one hand you have this huge volatility which hurts consumers, but all the regulations are adhered to, then that's just the market's functioning. But at the same time, if that regulation stifles innovation, when we have this fundamental long-term trend from moving from uh, centralized to decentralized, from moving from analog trust structures to digital trust structures, whether or not the regulation sees that as an opportunity or a threat is, I think, an open question. I think nearly regulators everywhere are trying to wrestle with that. Last year, we saw the New York Department of Financial Services wrestle for many months over its bit license, the license of Bitcoin companies. Um, again, that's probably too narrow and too specific and probably misses the, uh, the innovation. It seems to, in my view, be a bit of a mistake. So you have technology companies who are going to innovate. They're not, not going to innovate. Um, whether or not those same companies are going to be forced to jurisdictions where they're that is most welcoming, well, that's typically what occurs. When the cost of compliance, when the cost of regulation is high, you go somewhere else. It's even easier to do that now because we have the internet. We have global trade. Just get on a plane and incorporate your business somewhere. You know, it could be Africa, for example, where then you do have some kind of support. <clears throat> that's sort of like regula regulatory arbitrage. It's trying to find, <clears throat> and that's not a game to, that, I, that I think Hong Kong should play. I think our regulations are there for a good purpose. The question is how can we use these technical uh, developments to support the Hong Kong story, which as I said is trust, right? help China move from made in China to trust in China via Hong Kong.